Hello. Hello. And so. welcome back. <laughs> so, yeah, now we have upcoming a few short parts. So first will be your future career in scientific computing, where we sort of give some like high level information about what you can expect and some other resources available to you. Uh, this didn't really fit anywhere else that well, so we did it here. And then after that, we go into connecting to the cluster. So the way this works is that we have a demo session of connecting to the cluster now, and then you can go to Zoom and practice connecting, like actually try to do it, ask for help there, whatever. And you should be all ready by tomorrow when we begin the course, because we'll assume that it works and we can get started right away. So, and, it, and if you already are connected or once you get it working, you can just leave. Yeah. But please yep. check HackMD and give us some feedback there. You'll see a new feedback, feedback section. So with that said, are we ready to begin the next part? Yeah, I guess so. this is a short motivational talk of, you know, why do you need to care about scientific computing? Of course, you know, maybe not all of us will be coders or, or programmers or scientists or whatever yeah. we will end up doing our career. But in general, I think that these type of skills are, you know, the equivalent of a driving license. Mm -hmm. And there is no other way of learning than interacting with the people who can already do something and, uh, and basically learn from others and try to learn with yourself, of course, you need to practice. Yeah. So what we're trying to promote that as it's written here, do not go alone. We try to create an environment that is inclusive. We all come from so different backgrounds, different countries, different interests, but we have this, this common goal of learning to use these tools and get the best out of these tools to do what we want to do, whether it's uh, science or whatever we will do when we, when we grow up. So here, in this section, in this short page, there's a collection of links that we provide at Alto at least. There is an equivalent for other sites, for ESC University with it for Science and Tamper and Olu. But the idea is basically that, you know, you will find a blocker, you, you will always find a blocker at some point, and then you can come and ask for help. We provide multiple channels that, you know, would allow you for a kind of a fast interaction often it's 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 much faster to have a quick chat sit down together solve the issue and then we learn from you some something that we didn't know and you learn from us so it's a it's a two-way exchange what i like to really stress is our daily garage so mm -hmm. it's basically every day at 1 p.m we have a room we have a zoom room where there's this administrator of the triton cluster but not not just us there's also people from um, our uh, data management services, RDM services, and uh, you know, so many people from all Alto hang around, and you can bring any sort of question, whether it's with the Python cluster or with scientific computing in general. Yeah. And then we're trying to promote also this chat, which is a Zulip chat. It's basically, I mean, something like Slack you can think of, but where again, everyone from multiple, uh, you know, departments or school or wherever they come, they might have an issue. We're trying to promote use group user groups you know so that the, all the users of matlab can talk with each other and the python users and console user and whatever is your you know your tool then maybe when it comes to training well this course that you find here is part of in our website psychom.alto.fi we have other training courses and in general more broadly i really like to promote a lot Code Refinery, which is an organization that spans across the Nordics. And the idea here is that, you know, it's not really learning how to code or learning, you know, some programming language. It's more learning what surrounds the coding activity. So in, in the end, you know, you, you will write whatever code, you know, you are the expert mm -hmm. for that bit, but you need all this set of tools to, for example, make sure that your code is reproducible, that you can share it with others that you can uh, reuse it in the yeah. future and things like that. Then maybe Richard 
maybe you want to say about mm. something about research software our because it's your yeah. <laughs> creation <laughs> yeah so a year ago we had this idea that if we're doing stuff online what else can we do so i mean it's not exactly a podcast but well, i don't know what the proper term is but basically occasionally we go and we have some topic and then we will go in depth into that topic so for example there was one on um git or resolving git conflicts or there can be something on data management or like there other was a nice one on the on the on the cluster etiquette because mm. the cluster is a, mm. is a shared resource so you know you need some etiquette yeah. to respect each other so that, that i really like that episode. yeah so the basic idea is that it's like sitting down with your colleagues and seeing what tips and tricks they have so you can adopt them and also what we can learn from other people so right now we do it basically whenever we have an idea but traditionally it has been thursday evenings at 9 30 helsinki time but well yeah and it's also on twitch yeah and then some other good link good good or actually it's like, like a, a collection of links to get started with scientific computing it's this hands-on scientific computing so here you find some sort of a path that would start from the beginning from the linux shell from the blocks up to up to basically what we will cover tomorrow with the so-called parallel jobs and using hpc hpc resources yeah. and with this you can even get one or two credits if you if you take it yeah so this is a good way well it's basically sort of the full kickstart for researchers everything from Linux shell and Git up to the computing stuff. So we made it because we've seen that many times academic courses are, well, more theoretical than applied, and we need a way to make sure everyone can start on an equal footing. So that's what we've been working on. Okay. Yeah. And then here in general, when it comes to professional development, um there is a figure that is emerging in um in academia or at least in the in the scientific in the scientific research which is the idea of research software engineer it's not really a new label in a sense that some people might say that you know we all are research software engineer because mm -hmm. we are putting together some code and hopefully make some you know science or numbers meaningful numbers out of it but um, but the community is growing and universities like alto are recognizing this as um, as a career as a, as a profession right now we have Alto at least is providing this um, this um, service so that you know if you are if your supervisor if you are blocked with your research project and, and the block list this type of you know coding software pipelines and whatever this is a this is a service that we can that we can provide there's the links here and um i don't know if you want to say something more about research software engineer service yeah so i guess you'll notice in the next few days there's a lot you may need to learn in order to do this computing stuff on the cluster i mean it really is and many people need to do computing but to be honest not everyone needs to know everything themselves i mean yeah. that's why we have division of labor and all that modern economic theory and so on so if you're from if you need to do a project and you really don't want to deal with the programming or computing side yourself the service can do it so we basically want everyone to be able to do computing not just those that dedicate all their time to programming it's available in the Alto School of Science right now. And if you're not in the School of Science, the status is sort of unknown. So we would need to arrange funding somehow. But anyway, contact us and we can work and see what we can do. A good way to contact us is to come to the Alto Daily Garage and we can talk there. 
Yep. Yeah. All right. I guess this is, I mean, I don't know if we inspire yeah. and motivate <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. in learning more about scientific computing, but you know, we all need to start from somewhere and maybe mm -hmm. now we can actually, we should start by testing that we yeah. can connect to HPC yeah. clusters.